The best signal, this time. During the summer of 1989, that iconic Batman movie debuted, and it was advertised everywhere. What are you? I'm Batman. There were action figures, Taco Bell promotions, Diet Coke promotions. We seem to be down to our last Diet Coke. Mad Magazine tie-ins, and the inevitable release of Batman for the NES. Now, I'll never forget the feeling I had when me and my cousin went to the video game store and saw this title pop up for the very first time. And I couldn't wait to get this one home and fire it up. Look at that iconic logo. Can't go wrong with this one, or so I thought. The first level showcases the gritty streets of Gotham City, thugs at every turn, smooth controls, and the ability to toggle between weapons like the batarangs, bat missiles, and the bat buzzsaw blades. Huh, I must have been in the bathroom during that part of the movie. Now yes, this game is pretty decent because it plays amazing, it looks amazing, the music is awesome. But let's not judge this comic book game by its cover because once reaching those later levels, this game becomes harder than petrified batshit. Holy piles of unflushable feces, Batman! That's right, Robin. When you start this game, things will be all hunky-dorky as long as you have a nice supply of batarangs by your side. Once exhausting your supply, however, you better get ready for a batshit storm of epic proportions. The only weapon you'll have left are your fists, and, well, they pretty much suck. So your A-game better be the shiniest fucking polished turd known to mankind, or else your crime-fighting days will be short-lived. And when Batman dies, he literally goes out in a blaze of glory, just like some Mortal Kombat finisher bullshit. Toasty! Holy fireballs of flaming shit, Batman! As a kid, this was one game I could never get that far in, because this isn't a title you could just pick up and play through. Each enemy has their own precision timed attacks that you have to memorize, which ends up sucking all the fun out of it. And if you're not careful, they'll all just end up pecking away at your energy meter until killing you off. Why? Why do you have to be so fucking hard? Ah! Special in encountering these rocket pack flying assholes. Don't try escaping these guys by advancing forward because we'll just advance along with you. Ah! Son of a... And God help you if you kill one and go backwards in the wrong direction because they'll just end up respawning on you. Oh good God, now there's two of these assholes! Oh, you motherfucking game, eat shit! You go from fighting street shit, platform shit, to surviving rooftop shit, to this ninja assassin shit. If you have those weapons, he's easy to kill, but run out of them halfway through your battle. Oh no! Ah, shit! Ah, bat fuck. And the same thing goes for this level boss, too. You can't use your bat fists against this guy. He'll wipe your ass all over the concrete. Ah! Ugh. Ah. But if this game would just give me an endless supply of batarangs, then this guy becomes pretty simple to beat? Wait a minute, it was just that easy? <clears throat> what makes this situation even worse is the game couldn't even give me a recognizable Batman villain to fight off, like the Riddler, Catwoman, or even Clayface. Hell, I'd even settle for Mr. Zaz at this point. But nope, this game gives us Killer Moth. Killer Moth? Who in the hell is that? And how is this reject Batman villain kicking my ass so badly? 
Okay, granted, Killer Moth is sort of known now, but back in 1989, no one knew who the hell this guy was. It's like they picked a character from the bottom of a barrel with the bottom that's fallen out. And if you think the Batman villains get even better in these later levels, well, check these out. We've got the Executioner, Firebug, and this machine that looks like it was ripped out right out of a Metroid game. Oh, pathetic. Holy unrecognizable pull of piss poor villains, Batman! Well, at least we have the Joker as the final boss in this game, but good fucking luck getting there. Especially when you reach the second level, where you're required to precision jump from one platform to the next ad nauseum. One wrong move and ah oh, shit! Splash right down to the chemicals below that no won't kill you right away, but instead teases you that thinking your escape is possible as you try wall jumping out of this shit. It always just goes terribly wrong. Aw, oh, bullshit. Alright, let's try this again. We can get this. Come on. Jump over here. Come on. Come on. Aw, oh, you dick. Let's try this one more time. Oh, God. Here we go. Damn it. Ah! You bat bastard. Holy chemical reactions that go right up your butt, Batman. And don't get me started on this area where electrical live wires are found everywhere. I always hated this part because how the hell am I supposed to pass this without getting hurt? Ah, bat piss! Now I'm sure any fan of this Batman game will agree that the cutscenes in this game are top notch. First off, we get some really cool pre-game banter before you even start the game. And then once starting the game, we get a Batmobile racing into Gotham City to save it. Haha, <laughs> yeah, look at Batman. Then after the first level, the Batmobile ends up blasting its way into the chemical plant. Yep, worth every penny. Now while digging into the history of this game, I found something truly shocking about these cutscenes that'll blow your mind. Especially if you've played this game hours on end, and you think you've seen everything that it has to offer. Well, it turns out a few years ago, a prototype to this Batman game surfaced, and the most jaw-dropping thing about it was that the game originally contained a whole subplot that was scrapped as well as an alternate ending? Holy multiverse of interchangeable outcomes, Batman! In the original game, we see the iconic intro where the Batman rolls into Gotham City and Batman getting out. But in the prototype, there's a whole deleted subplot that starts the game off with Batman chasing down the bad guy to find Vicky Vale. So riddle me this, why was that cutscene cut from this game? As a kid, I would have loved to see it. All the early games for the NES never had a lot of cutscenes to them. But when we got them, we always ate them up because they came few and far between. I just can't believe they cut all this stuff out of the original game. So after level 1, the prototype then continues the story of Batman finally rescuing Vicky Vale from Killer Moth. She then tells him he needs to go to the chemical plant. And again, why cut all this great information out? The retail version only contains a small cutscene where the Batmobile just blasts through this wall and you don't even know where he's at. Talk about gutting all the good stuff. Once skipping to the level 4 cutscene, this is where the retail version starts improving on what could have been, since the prototype's version just has the Gotham City skyline. But later, they added a Batwing for the movie to spicing things up here. Alright, I dig that. Score one for the retail version. Now let's talk about the alternate ending for this game because this is where things get really interesting. In the prototype, we're given a scene that was deleted that occurs before you head to the final boss. Then the prototype reveals that the last boss you have to face in this game is not the Joker. No, no, it's actually none other than Firefly. Firefly? You mean to tell me this game is supposed to be adapted from the movie? Doesn't even give you a chance to beat up on the main villain from it? Who the hell's responsible for this bat blunder? The only way you get to face the Joker at the end is during the game's ending cutscene when Batman confronts him and then punches him out. And then after that, the credits start rolling? What in the holy hell is this train wreck? Well, thankfully, someone over there came to their senses at the last minute, because in the final version, ta-da, the Joker becomes your final boss. Ugh, crisis averted. So after beating him in the final version, well, the game ditches the entire prototype ending and replaces it with a brand new one. In this new cutscene, Batman shows up to punch out the Joker, which sends him down to his death. And then we get to see a dead Joker, still grinning as if he's laughing it up. 
Well, I gotta say this new ending is a lot better, but this is just wild to think about. This game has two different endings. And the craziest part about them is that you could have just taken the prototype ending, let it play through, and then tacked on the new ending after that, and the story would actually make even more sense than the one we got. This would have been awesome because the ending would have been longer and more satisfying than just throwing them out the window. I'm not sure why they didn't just incorporate both endings here, but I'm sure this is a mystery not even the Riddler himself could crack. It's so crazy to think that there are so many changes made from the prototype to the final version of this Batman game. Well, at least the one we got ended up turning out okay. All right, guys, well, that's my cue. Time to suit up. All right, time to go fight some crime. No, wait a minute, not you. No! Holy flaming pieces of bat bits, Batman!